know now is Wall Street can bring down Main Street. Good evening. One of Britain's biggest mortgage lenders, Northern Rock, is applying to the Bank of England for emergency financial support. Yeah. Tonight, one of the biggest investment firms is in serious trouble. Lehman Brothers with a four... The Lehman Brothers stock has been plummeting along with confidence in its ability. To... This is too boring. We'll make it simpler. Once upon a time, not too long ago, in the land of booming economies and ever-growing markets, there was a hidden danger lurking beneath the surface. No, God! Not in generations has Wall Street absorbed the number of body blows it took today. The American financial system is rocked to its foundation as top Wall Street institutions topple under a mountain of debt. When you step back for just a moment, consider the events uh, of the last few days. It is truly unbelievable. This is the tale of the 2008 financial crisis, a story of greed, risk, and the consequences that shook the world. The seeds of disaster. In the early 2000s, the housing market was booming. With low interest rates and easy access to credit, people were buying homes left and right. Investors were eager to profit from this golden opportunity, and banks were all too happy to oblige. This led to skyrocketing home prices, creating what's known as a housing bubble. But amidst the gold rush, a dark secret lay hidden. Wow! I don't like the dark! Banks were giving out loans called subprime mortgages to people who couldn't really afford them. These risky loans were like ticking time bombs, just waiting to go off. What are subprime mortgages? A subprime mortgage is a type of home loan offered to borrowers with poor credit histories or lower credit scores. These borrowers are considered riskier because they have a higher chance of defaulting on their loan payments compared to borrowers with good credit. Subprime mortgages often come with higher interest rates and less favorable terms than conventional mortgages. As lenders attempt to compensate for the increased risk associated with lending to borrowers with a less than stellar credit history. During the housing boom in the early 2000s, many subprime mortgages were issued with adjustable interest rates, which started with low initial rates that later increased significantly. This led to a wave of defaults when borrowers could no longer afford their monthly mortgage payments, contributing to the 2008 financial crisis. The bubble bursts. The day of reckoning came when the housing bubble finally burst. Home prices began to plummet, and those who had taken out risky loans suddenly found themselves unable to pay. Defaults and foreclosures surged, and the entire financial system began to unravel. As banks scrambled to deal with their toxic assets, giants like Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers fell. Panic spread across the globe, and the world teetered on the brink of economic collapse. Whose fault? Why wasn't I on it? My employees, my shareholders, creditors, clients have taken a huge amount. Did you know? The events leading up to the 2008 financial crisis were so dramatic that they inspired a critically acclaimed movie, The Big Short. Based on the book by Michael Lewis, the film follows a group of investors who predicted the housing market collapse and profited from it the heroes step in. In the face of this unprecedented crisis, governments and central banks around the world sprang into action. Except more incentives than greed. You're wrong. No one's paying attention. The banks got greedy, and we can profit. In the U.S., Congress passed the Troubled Asset Relief Program, TARP, a bold plan to rescue struggling banks and financial institutions by buying their toxic assets. The Federal Reserve, like a knight in shining armor, charged in, slashing interest rates and pumping money into the economy through a policy called quantitative easing. These heroic efforts helped stabilize the financial system and prevent further damage. The aftermath. But the story doesn't end there. The 2008 financial crisis left deep scars on the global economy. It led to a severe recession, soaring unemployment rates, and a widening gap between the rich and the poor. The crisis also sparked a wave of change. Governments around the world implemented new regulations to prevent such a disaster from happening again. While progress has been made, the shadow of the crisis still lingers, reminding us of the lessons we must never forget. Did you know? The 2008 financial crisis played a role in the creation of Bitcoin.
the world's first decentralized cryptocurrency. Its mysterious creator, known only as Satoshi Nakamoto, designed Bitcoin as a response to the crisis, aiming to provide an alternative to traditional financial systems. See you guys. All right, take care. Hey, would you recommend buying Bitcoin? You know what's funny? I was just talking to my buddy about that who knows about this. Um, I got I got two different... One guy said, yeah, you probably want to. Another friend of mine said, uh, not, not like it's a bad thing. They just don't know where it's going to go. Yeah, the lessons learned. As we reflect on the story of the 2008 financial crisis, there are valuable lessons to be learned. We must promote responsible lending and borrowing practices, ensure effective regulation and oversight, and tackle income inequality head on. Only by learning from the past can we build a more stable and prosperous future. For the tale of the 2008 financial crisis serves as a cautionary reminder of the consequences of greed, recklessness, and the perils of an unchecked financial system. And so our story comes to an end, but the lessons it teaches will guide us as we strive to create a brighter tomorrow. Let us know what you think about 2008 financial crisis in the comments below and also tell us what video should we make next. See you guys next time. Happy investing.